When I was 14, I went with my whole family on a trip to New York to go see my sister's friend in a show and my mom wanted to get dinner with one of her friends from college. So we all piled in the car and went to New York and we saw the show and it was really good. And then my mom went to go have dinner with her friend from college. And while that was happening, they said, all right, you're gonna hang out with their two sons. Um, you're gonna take the train back to their apartment and order pizza. And so when I got to the restaurant, I was looking around for my mom's friend, or yeah, my mom's friend. And I saw this boy and he was about as tall as me and had brown hair and brown eyes. And I was like, he seems cool. But I, for some reason, I like knew that he was going to be someone important in my life, you know? So we hung out that night and I got his number and we started like texting and we became Facebook friends and like we followed each other on Instagram and all this stuff. And he became one of my best friends and I slowly fell in love with him. It took a while, but yeah, I was definitely falling in love with him. And he would come to me about like girls and stuff like that. And it just broke my heart. And I didn't really talk to anyone about it because he lived in New York. So I knew that it wouldn't really be a thing that could work because he was so far. And I thought he didn't love me. Um, but in December, right after my 16th birthday, he, or sorry, 15th birthday, um, he told me how he felt and I told him how I felt and we started dating. And while we were dating, I visited him a few times and I fell more and more in love. But by August, it just seemed like the same routine. Like I would go there or he would come here and we would spend time together and it was great while we were together, but when one of us left, it was just hard. And it was really sad because I thought he was the love of my life and I thought that I was lucky enough to meet the love of my life at 14, but it was really I didn't want to go through the routine for all of high school. I wanted to, to be able to be a kid, to be a teenager, and to be able to live without constantly worrying about disappointing someone. And so in October, he came to visit, and I told him that I didn't want to continue our relationship because I was worried that I was gonna disappoint him at some time. And I was worried that I was wasting my youth because I, I felt like I should be able to go out and have fun with my friends and not have to keep texting him and have him check up on me. And I don't know, it was really, I was really sad for a while after we broke up because I did really love him. And I think some part of me still does really love him. And I think that I'm always going to love him, but because he was my first love. <laughs> and I mean, we're still friends, but we don't really talk as much or as in depth as we used to when we were friends before. So, what do you mean by, you were worried about disappointing him, Does that, is that connected to the fact that he lives far away? Yeah, I was worried that at some point I wouldn't be able to go and see him for some big thing, or he wouldn't be able to come see me or something, and it would all just be too much for us. Can you talk a little about that, just loving someone who's so far away? Yeah. Um, I think that there's a big level of trust 
in loving someone who lives, you know, 200 miles or 2,000 miles. Um, and I think that that trust comes with a lot of responsibility. And I think that being 15, we both weren't really responsible enough to handle that level of trust. Because you have to trust them that they're not going to, you know, go out and be a teenager and, you know, experiment with different things and with different people and stuff like that. And so there's a big level of trust there. And I trusted him a little less than he trusted me. I loved him. I only wanted to, you know, be with him.